Subsequent to that, where someone asks a question, I need to make sure I distribute it to everyone. And so we, we keep everything above board and, and fair. Okay. And the bids are due back on the 3rd? May 3rd. May 3rd at 3 p.m. And then we'll open them and score them. There's an entire scoring process within, okay. within the proposal to the so. So everybody knows what, what's happening right now. Now, if I can move to budgets. Uh, you should have seen some of the, the monthly reports. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing particularly troublesome. Uh, in the, the comparison this year versus the same point last year, as we've seen all along, the uh, 1100s general instruction is down compared to last year because of the reduction in, in personnel. Um, 1200 special ed is up compared to last year, primarily because of tuition. And that shows about the middle of the page on, on that report. On the current versus budget analysis, uh, again, nothing particularly unusual. I can tell you that I'm estimating somewhere $300,000 or more um, that we will probably spend that has not yet been encumbered. So that will bring the expenditure variance down to the, the $350,000 range. We'll be working with revenue more this week. The final payment of adequacy aid for this year is due. So once we have an idea of what that number is, then we can compare that to what we've scheduled and budgeted. I believe you received a copy of some budget moves. First one uh, was a reallocation of workers' compensation expense. We spoke about that during the budget process. That's one of the reasons I, I made that adjustment during the budget process, so that next year's would be compared to this year's as reallocated, and we wouldn't be seeing a, a difference. The, um, there is a difference by class of employee, the way workers' compensation is typically charged. Teachers and, and educators have one rate, whereas custodians and drivers, uh, crossing guards, are at a different rate. That's the way it's always been. I'm just trying to 
get things a bit more accurate so you can have a better idea of the cost of each of our components. So that entry was made. Um, my silly little worksheet showed that I had the same variance at the beginning as I did at the end, and just reallocating $19,100 between the different accounts. The second one is all health insurance, and again, I had the, the same totals in both the beginning and ending column to, to raise our confidence. And you can see from the what was called the current budget balance that some accounts were overspent and some were underspent. So we did some reallocation. So when I do the dialing for dollars to make other moves as we balance out the year, I have an idea of where I'm starting from. It, it didn't make sense to just grab the first big one knowing that the line underneath it was overspent. Right. So that's why we did some of that, that balancing there. And the third one is one of the reasons why I needed to do it. As we've had discussions with special ed tuition over the, the entire fiscal year now, um, where we're at a point that I need to make some moves to, to cover some expenditures. I think that's going to be it for the rest of the year, or any new anticipated? As, as of Friday afternoon, <laughs> when this entry was made, that was the, the oh, last. Uh, no, there are still some, some changes that are unknown. Um, there's still potential for, for kids moving around, uh, perhaps changing residence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are still a lot of balls in the air that, that, that Kelly is working on. But this is my, my current need. So I would appreciate your approval for these entries. I make a motion that we approve the reallocations as presented by the business manager. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Okay. Okay. So unfinished business. Um, we have some more. Do you want to discuss this? Sure. Okay. Yeah, just that we, we were notified of three additional grants, as I've indicated before, and uh, we've got the official uh, letters, which are in your, uh, in your uh, folder. So down the road, uh, we'll, Tom and I will talk about this a little bit with several of these uh, other big enough amounts that we will have to have a hearing, particularly the one for the, the academy, apparently. Um, because it's a non-budgeted expenditure, even though even though uh, the majority of the, the cost of these will be paid through the state grants. But just to keep you updated on what, what we're doing with those, the progress, uh, communications upgrade uh, refers to uh, radios, additional radios for the for the buildings, the security cameras, and then uh, a little bit for the reinforcement of the. Of the remaining doors of Lightway that haven't received the glass uh, reinforcement treatment. Um, so that's uh, that's the, the latest on that. There's been a lot in the news about uh, this particular program, and we've been happy, successful in most, been successful in a couple so far. But uh, we've tried to do the best we could with this to improve uh, security in our school. I just had one question. Yes. These letters say recommended by the School Infrastructure Commission. Does Correct. it not, not now have to go to the Executive Council and the Governor? Yeah, it's got, a couple of hoops. Yep. it's got a couple of hoops to jump. Yeah, the Executive Council and the Governor. The one that's gone through all the hoops so far was the window replacement at the right. Academy. But the others are in, the, in progress. So my next question is if these finally all get approved mm -hmm. by the Governor and the Council, Yes. We then need to have a public hearing on accepting the funds by law? Yep. These, these are not federal pass-through grants. Mm -hmm. This is a special piece of legislation that was created. Uh, they're going to be accounted for differently. Mm -hmm. But perhaps more importantly is there's a matching fund component, mm -hmm. which is going to be out of what's left of your operating budget, mm -hmm. either this year or next. Mm -hmm. okay. So that, that's why it's... Because my understanding with the first one is we can wait, we have approval until April of 2019. We do. 
So we may have approval for some of these into the next year. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, new business. Um, engage in community and planning the future. Yeah, and again, it's just it's it's actually bringing back to the fore, not a, not necessarily uh, all that new. I've talked about it a few times, but again, uh, the three essential questions: the areas budget, uh, feature that Lakeway, what we're going to do with uh, that particular structure, and then how we're trying to work with our curriculum and programs to personalize education. And so, um, and Ann and I talked about this a little bit in our planning. The other day, at some some point in the near future, uh, we'll probably we require another meeting of the board, a planning meeting of some type, to really focus in on on how we want to proceed uh, going forward with those three areas, or if those even are the three areas that the board believes we should focus on. Uh, but that's certainly, I'm sure, some some iteration of that will emerge, and we'll need to move forward with that. Uh, as we head into the remainder of this year and into next year. All right, I am thinking of a board work session, but two members are absent tonight, yeah. so I may have to yeah. wait till I contact them. Yeah. Would that be to come up with a strategy to involve the public in all of this planning? Yeah. Series of meetings, annual forums, committees, council? I think so. Internal strategy first. Internal yeah. strategy first, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, you know, we kind of and talk about what what are what are the areas of emphasis. It may be those, it may not be those. I suspect those will be among those, but that'll be for the board to decide how they what they want us to proceed and the, the main force or the main focus of the topic statement going to the public. Okay. All right, then the next thing on the agenda is planning plans for travel opportunities for LHS students. Jennifer Carver. Yeah, and Melissa yeah. Jones. Um, and it's for middle school and high school students. So, yeah. Back in December, let me hand this to you. This is more just guiding. Um, back in December, I talked to you about the principals, the North Country principals talking about um, travel opportunities for our students. And, um, at that time, Monroe School was going to Costa Rica in February 2019. Profile and High School had the opportunity to go to Ireland, England, and Wales for more of a arts-focused field trip. Was that? Um, it was. It's going to be led by Thea Boyer, who happens to be the Visual Arts High School teacher, um, over a profile, and um, I believe they're doing the exact same tour that we had actually looked at okay. as well. Yeah, so they're going to be going there. And Galapagos, the Galapagos Islands is something Gorham has been structuring for their April 2019. So as I was talking to Melissa, we're looking at opportunities where we might be able to provide to our students. And our students can certainly join any of these other trips mm -hmm. um, if they wish. So I put that out to the families and give them contact information and prices. Um, several families are interested, but probably really would like their own school to be sponsoring a trip as opposed to sending their kids to another, work with another school. Mm -hmm. So, in February, yeah, in February, um, we had, I, I'd been talking to Jen a little bit about these opportunities, and we were looking through them like, oh, this is pretty exciting. So, just um, to get a sense on where our students might be interested in going, we did create a survey, <coughs> sent it out to the whole school, and this is what you're looking at right here. It's, the numbers are very tiny. <laughs> but we had, that's okay, it gives it a nice little pie chart snapshot, which ones. is great. Um, but we, we received about 119 responses, which was really wonderful. And um, specifically, we were looking at, are students interested in having any kind of a travel club? And if so, where would you like to go uh, domestically and internationally. So we offered a few suggestions, but we also had another category, and, and we received quite um, a wonderful response. Um, in domestic uh, travel, um, I was surprised how many students actually were interested in going to, to Boston, but uh, New York came up first, and then that was followed by, uh, looks like Washington, D.C., and then Boston. 
And what I did was uh, Jen and I got together, we created a task time uh, travel club opportunity for students to take a look at some different domestic travel options through the company EF Tours. And we had students vote and decide which place they wanted to go. We did the exact same thing for international travel. And uh, the top response there was England, followed by France, and then Italy. Students voted on both, and students voted for a domestic trip to happen in 2019, in spring, would be to New York City. There was a tour that we looked at called the Big Apple. It's a four-day tour. Uh, we did, Jen and I did inquire to EF Tours to get some numbers. Uh, they are estimating for us it is going to be about just over $1,800 per student, and if adults are interested, just over $2,000. Uh, looking at a trip that has roughly 30 students to it with a 10 to 1 student chaperone, chaperone um, ratio. Now, they did also say for folks who were interested in committing early that they would give a $200 discount on this, which would bring the price down a little bit, which is helpful. Uh, international, they had selected, students had selected Italy, which sounds absolutely fabulous. Uh, our estimate was um, 3,300, just over 3,300, and that does include a $200 early committal um, discount. Um, adults a little bit more, and this has a student ratio of 6 to 1. So right now, students have, we kind of um, had indicated to them <laughs> what were chosen, because we did have students who were saying, what, how, did, how, did, how did the vote come out? How did this go? Um, but we're looking to get your approval before moving forward and having a parent-student meeting um, before April vacation. For more information, if you turn the page, Jen did a great job. Yeah, I don't know if I printed it in color or not, but highlighted. To give you an idea of what is included in the New York City tour, mm -hmm. um, this gives you a layout of the four days what we'd be looking at, um, seeing, and where we'd be going. And also attached to this are, oh, it didn't come out. <laughs> um, okay. Um, there were a few things on um, EF Tours commitment to safety um, as insurance. Also included is the Grand Tour of Italy. That's a couple pages in, so you can take a peek at that itinerary and what is included there. And so, so that you kind of understand where EF Tours um, falls, it's, it's a well-known, well-used, uh, many North Country schools are using this mm -hmm. company. Um, it includes a $50 million liability protection for group leaders. Their schools are also covered, um, and they have certificates of insurance to issue for schools naming them as... Um, as being covered by their liability protection. It includes travel insurance. Some it's, it would be required of us, or we would require it of our, our participants for the international as well as the domestic. The domestic includes overnight security, so from 10 to 5, kind of like what we used to do with Washington, D.C. They had students uh, in their rooms at a certain time and then security in the hallways. Um, the strategy is a little different in international tours. Um, in both tours, they can, our students in grades 7 through 12 can earn elective credit if they participate in projects, um, college credit if you're a college student, and even some professional development. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that you have, I, I tried to ask all the questions I could imagine that you might ask the tour company when I was on the phone with them, when we were on the phone, but. Uh, we're hoping that we can kind of explore the possibility of arranging the, these travel opportunities with our community's families and felt we needed your approval before we moved forward. We are hoping for a um, April 19th community meeting um, with our families about the opportunity. So what more? I, we wouldn't know chaperones. We wouldn't know that yet. We wouldn't know our numbers of students, but... We just needed to be able to go ahead to explore that and offer it to our community members. Just a couple of questions. Sure. Um, is there is there a minimum number 
in order to keep these prices, and what happens if we fall below that minimum? So the reason why, like Monroe, Profile, Gorham are reaching out to other area schools, right. it's to get their numbers up. Um, because we're going during a, the April vacation time period, there's more opportunity to partner up with other schools. So we may be partnered with some school from Manchester or from Massachusetts um, in order for them to, for us to get that. That kind and of if numbers. we don't meet the minimum, um, how would that price adjustment work? It would, it would go up if we didn't meet the minimum. And I think that's what we found with Washington, D.C. We didn't meet the minimum, so we ended up having to, we canceled ultimately. Um, but being open to work with other schools is going to be a great benefit to us. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody does, especially the international, the two-year commitment, if they you know, paid for 18 months and all of a sudden they had to drop off, what, what is the, the refund cutoff? There's insurance for it, um, yes. and I think, I can't give you the dates, um, it's in the bid packet. Um, we'd share that out with the, the families at the, the larger meeting. Mm -hmm. is it the, uh, the, the gal that we spoke with, uh, Maggie, I believe her name was, um, for the international tour, she didn't give, I don't remember if she said the date specifically to us, but she said if a family did need to cancel, they could ultimately make a claim um, right to EF tours. Yeah, it, none of the money would funnel through us at all. It would be directly through the, it would be directly through the company. Um, we would not be looking to do fundraisers. Mm -hmm. The kids can do their own, and the money stays within their family groups if they do multi-family group fundraisers, and they pay their monthly fee to EF tours. Do you anticipate any cost to the district? No. Nope. So it's all nope. family driven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. It almost sounds like this is a program for kids who have money. Mm -hmm. What about the ones that want to go that don't have the funds? That their parents don't have the funds. How do they? So I think how do they get involved and be able to do this? We have the kids that are on our travel group that would need to fundraise themselves and sort of by having the travel club, you have kids that can collaborate and figure that out. Um, we broke it down to how much they needed to uh, earn per month. So one hundred and forty-three dollars for the domestic, one hundred and thirty-eight for the international trip. And we'd certainly help them with their budgeting. Um, they may need to get jobs. They may they they'll work out as a team. The task the the um, travel club team can brainstorm those things. Mm -hmm. When we did Washington D.C., we had a family who every weekend did sales, some sort of bake sale, or and, and put both kids through the Washington D.C. trip. I think by planning far enough ahead, it becomes a little bit more manageable for the kids to learn how to earn and budget money. Um, but so you're kid, right. So you're the, right. Kid, the poor kids that want to go are really going to have to put in the effort and to figure out how, how to be able to go. Yeah. Okay. And, and the hope would be that as a ta as a travel club team, that they're, they're able to support together. to each other and say, you know, support each other that way. Okay. More of a collaborative effort instead of just putting the trip out there and then not ever revisiting it and supporting each other. We've got that support network. Mm -hmm. So it would cost us a task time. Um, and that's something that's doable. We had about 60 kids interested in a yeah. travel club. Um, so it gives them purpose, meaning, and, mm -hmm. and a shared goal. And I think Jen and I both have considered exactly your point um, in thinking about the population of students that we have and mm -hmm. you know what what ideas or what ways can we best support them so that it's not a certain population of students that, that get to go, but it's whoever really, really wants to. Um, and we can help motivate them, we're hoping, uh, to get involved and, and raise those funds. And hopefully get them involved with the uh, town businesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let them go and present to the towns. So, okay. Now, we even talk about per week. What do you need to make? $30, $33 per week is what you need. Can you babysit? So there's, there's, it's actually motivational. Okay. Instead of just earning money for buying games or whatever they might yeah. do with their money, they've got an ultimate purpose. It's a goal. Any other questions from the board? Jen, you said this is going to be open to 7, seven through June 12. Yeah. Yeah. Did you find out 
find that there were quite a few middle school students yes. that were yes. interested. So yes. we more two, than high school yes. students. Uh, well, I think there were probably juniors and seniors who were interested, and I've heard some of them say, darn, I'm not going to be here. Right. <laughs> um, and that's just, you know, the timing. Juniors could have the opportunity to go um, to New York. Um, but, they, our, but they could join the other, yeah, the other February, next February's trips, or April's trips. trips. If okay. they, they've got less time to raise money, which doubles the amounts, but... Um, certainly a possibility. Mm -hmm. It was impressive. There were there were a lot of uh, task time seven grade seven through nine mm -hmm. interest. One thing that we're conscious about is that once we put the money out there, and we kind of started, you know, we shared a little of what the general um, scope was. What we worry about is kids saying, "I know that's too much for my family, and I'm not going to pursue it." Yeah. Um, so I want to make sure that, it, and I don't know that all of our students know what our families are capable of, and what they would do to support their child in being able to obtain this kind of goal. So when we do share it out, we'll share it out with our whole community and a, like the phone call Monday night or the email Monday night, um, but also the kids that are on task, that task travel club will have the hard copies and so forth. Sure. Yeah. So we're hoping to keep it broad so that everybody sees opportunities and doesn't shut them down before they consider them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. excited for the kids. <laughs> I remember my senior year, we went to England. Mrs. Hayden took a group to England as a senior. I loved it. England, Scotland, Hadrian's Wall. That's great. That's great. So it's something that lasts for a I'll make a motion that we um, accept the travel proposal as presented and move it forward. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the yeah. work that you put into it already. Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Committee reports. I don't think there's any personnel at the moment. Facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have our next policy meeting on April 10th at 9 o'clock. So now we're down to the superintendent's report. Okay. Um, talk about a, a few new items, some staff development uh, activities we've had here recently. On uh, last Thursday, uh, there was a Universal Design uh, for Learning kickoff, uh, UDL kickoff in, in Concord. Um, as, as, as Jerry can attest and those, all others who follow the, uh, the board meetings for a while, uh, we've, we've been very much engaged in UDL. Uh, for a little over a year. Uh, our work with UDL started with uh, um, me reaching out uh, for having, having a conversation with some people at the state level about different initiatives that, the, we were, that they were doing regarding uh, comedy-based education, um, socio-emotional learning, universal design, uh, understanding by design, and a whole, whole myriad of, uh, of things that are, that are happening at the state level. Um, but we, we tried to focus, settle in on, on three main areas, as we've talked about many times, CompTIA-based education, UDL, and socio-emotional learning. So my conversation a year or so ago was uh, about UDL, and, and they were getting this uh, group, uh, group together that would, uh, from uh, a consulting firm out of Massachusetts who was coming in and working with schools um, to implement the, the UDL uh, framework for learning. Uh, we, we joined mid-year. This had already started a year ago. We came in mid-year, and uh, it was a bit bumpy, probably, right, Jennifer? It, it was, was kind of, you know, we, everyone else had been doing it, and uh, the other schools, that they wanted us to come in, and we did. Uh, they want to get that North Country presence, I think, in the, in the program for one thing. Um, but we, we did get it started. We did send a number of teachers to Orlando last year to the national event. Uh, we sent uh, the entire third grade team uh, to Indiana this year to a, to a Universal Design Conference, and part of that conference was uh, them going to a school um, and, uh, and observing there. And I, and I observed the, those three teachers' classrooms on several occasions, have been invited in to see the, what they're doing with uh, UDL principals in their classroom. So we come back around to this year, or past that, but in, in midway through this year, and the state once again put out a request for schools that want to be a part of 
UDL and, and learning about the, the methodology implemented in the classrooms. And so uh, Crystal on behalf of Lakeway and Jennifer on behalf of uh, middle school, high school, uh, put in the request. It was approved by the, the state. So what, what do we have, like 12 teachers yeah. for the day? 12 teachers, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer was there, I was there. We joined with about um, 300 or so other teachers in the state of New Hampshire for <coughs> you know, day one of, I guess, phase two, if you will, of the state program involving universal design. So uh, we spent that day with the, with the consultants. Uh, some of the consultants that worked with us last year will be working with us this year. Uh, but the bottom line is that uh, we're, uh, we're pleased to be a part of the group. Uh, we had a great group of teachers go. I think they were, they, they, the feedback we got from them was they were very pleased with the uh, training that they got. Uh, with the organization and looking forward to uh, working with uh, our consultant uh, going forward uh, for universal design for learning uh, an issue that we're working on. One of those three goals. Uh, Friday we had a staff development in, uh, in the district and again uh, though the activities that I was a part of and, and watched and participated in uh, again, we're aligned to the, the three stated goals, that being universal design, uh, counseling-based education, and social-emotional learning. Social-emotional learning was the primary focus in the morning. We had a, had a consultant came in who had done some work for us previously at the elementary level. And again, uh, his work with our teachers was to, again, understand uh, some of the things to look for uh, ways to work with students to uh, support them socially, emotionally, um, and support each other uh, at times when, uh, when you know, stress and difficulties and things happen that do happen to us uh, as, as professionals as well. Throughout the rest of the day, there were various sessions in both buildings uh, related to some follow-up to social-emotional learning, but also some UDL work and uh, some competency-based education work. So. It was, really, it was really gratifying to see the district staff development extremely well organized, very focused. Uh, and my hat's off to building principals and directors, uh, um, Melanie as well, who helped uh, with our, our curriculum coordinator, instructional coach, who helped put it all together and make it a successful day. Driver's education update, uh, we've had over 50 students complete so far. <coughs> the session will be beginning be beginning and I know in the near future Mike will want to come to the board and talk to us a little bit about the program and going forward and give a more uh, detailed full report but uh, hopefully uh, you know, anybody's got much feedback on driver's ed, I've gotten a little bit from time to time, it's, it's been a, a good good addition to the program, it hasn't been without its challenges. Um, I sat in a time or two with, with, with Jennifer and, and Mr. Shea and Mike, as they were hammering out the schedule, that this is, you know, and I, I want to be real clear about that. It required some more work and some effort and flexibility on their part and parents' part and kids' part. And, you know, Mike, you said, has done everything, though, to make the program successful. He's been extremely easy to work with, flexible, putting the kids first, and most importantly, of all the kids learning first um, at all times. So we're, I'm very pleased with that. Little and Chevrolet, as we've talked about before, has been very generous in their support and providing us with a vehicle. And best of all, as, as promised, the program is running into life. It hasn't cost us any money, <coughs> the taxpayers, uh, any money in terms of uh, the overall uh, net ending balance. It has run in the black, and so that's a, that's a, a successful program in many ways. But, in the, the coming weeks ahead uh, and months, we'll certainly need to look at how the program progresses, how we go in the future with it, what that looks like. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to report it's been a success so far. <clears throat> um, a couple months ago, we the uh, principal and vice and uh, assistant principal of the high school came to the board, we had, a, we had a short work session one day too to talk about different various programs and how we might begin to look at uh, restructuring some of our support programs uh, for our students that just aren't successful uh, in, our, in, our, in our traditional school. Um, 
where we're fortunate to have the Charter Academy here in town. Uh, we have four, sometimes up to six students who uh, attend that academy on a regular basis and it's been very successful for many of them. Uh, I have nothing but good things to say about this, you know, what they do and, and the, but it, how helpful they've been, not only to our students, but students in uh, other schools in the North Country. We've also uh, continued with several programs that were here in the past, the Learn program, uh, which was, has been a night evening program. We expanded it to a day program as well and uh, various other academic support programs for students that for whatever reason the traditional school structure, day, curriculum, and there's a variety of factors here aren't, is it, is it working for them? So we came, we came to the board some time ago to talk a little bit about uh, how do we put all some of these together? Uh, how, do we, how do we do things a little bit differently? And, and we begin looking at successful models in the state and uh, at that time the board uh, gave us the uh, okay to move forward and uh, begin the grant writing process uh, for developing a, an after school program uh, under the adult education grant and that, that means that uh, uh, you know, a variety of individuals would be eligible for some of the education here but it would be primarily aimed at high school students. Um, the first part of that process has been successful uh, we've gotten word that the first ten thousand dollars of the grant of that grant process has been approved. Uh, there's additional funds up to five thousand dollars that will be a part of that in the future, and then we're also working on some other grant uh, grants to help support the program. Title IV, which is a new grant program by the, from the state, that we'll be submitting uh, later this week or early next week, and then of course we'll continue to look at other sources of revenue. Uh, that we have as well as reallocating some of the funds that we've been using for other programs. But just want to give you an update on that. I did, uh, did include it in a mailing a while back so you kind of see a timeline of what thing, what we're doing and, and uh, some of that. But I want to keep the board and certainly the community apprised of, uh, of this, uh, of the program that we're working on. And again, it's, uh, it's, it's aimed at uh, making sure that we reach more students. <coughs> and that we, we look a little bit differently at how we educate students. I sent you out a, a letter out of an article out of Education Week regarding the federal budget uh, resolution process. And, uh, you know, school budgets and good news are, are kind of like oxymorons. You don't see them linked very often. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, in, in time will tell where everything shakes out, but, you know, certainly at the federal level, um, you know, some of the dire predictions of massive cuts, elimination of certain programs, uh, huge expansion of voucher programs and school cho choice programs. Um, and again, those, those are, everyone's entitled to different viewpoints on that. This, this is not to say that all those aforementioned programs by, by design are, are beneficial. They, many of those programs where they fall into school choice or vouchers uh, have applications as well. But uh, I think the argument all along has been that taking away money from public schools, whether it's at the state level, i.e. SB 193, or at the federal level, taking away money from the public schools to fund vouchers and other, other programs, school choice programs, uh, in some people's minds is, uh, is counterproductive. Uh, whatever, whatever one's viewpoint on that, uh, the fact is that it, at least at this point with the federal budget, it does look like there's some good news for public education and, and I think some of the school choice proponents as well. Uh, some uh, funding for Title II is at least looks like has been continued. Title II is a significant amount of money that goes toward teacher uh, staff development, uh, coaching, a lot of different things that we do in terms of improvement of instruction. That's what the focus of that money is. Our UDL work, uh, aside from the uh, work that we're doing at the state, much of that's been, for instance, funded through Title II, as well as some of our competency-based education work and SEL work as well. So we're happy to see that, uh, hopefully, that uh, Title II will continue and the state will 
be able to allocate something along the lines of what we have been getting in the past for that. Title I, uh, there will be some increases in, the, in Title I. And it looks like, uh, what I, I think maybe one of the things that made me most excited to see how this filters down to the state level is through the federal legislation some, some additional resources placed toward mental health and counseling in those areas, drug, drug uh, uh, prevention, some of those programs coming through the Department of Education that could be very beneficial. And I think we've, we've spoken many times of, of the many needs that we have here and how do we balance everything and how do we, how do we support kids and how do we still live within uh, a structure that, that, that our, those paying the bills our taxpayers are comfortable with and are, are able to do. So I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, that you know, some, of, some of the federal dollars will be, will be able to be used maybe to address some of those issues that we have uh, coming down the pipe. So that's, uh, that's some good news there. And uh, again, it's been a productive couple of weeks. And I know that uh, the, uh, the weeks, the next few weeks uh, ahead of the, again, another break, uh, will go pretty quick. And then we'll come back after a week and, what, six weeks and three days. And that's it for students. And plus, we have a lot more snow. <laughs> We'll see about that. The best thing. <laughs> we did. We did have a snow day last year in April. Whether we, whether again you know, whether it was called for or not, we didn't have it. But uh, maybe not this year. Maybe not. We hope not. We hope not. We truly hope not. One other thing I was going to talk about. I put this to last. Sorry. Is the Adidas contract? And Jennifer has. Some, and some things to share with you there because uh, that, that's kind of a big deal. We waded into that into that territory last year with a hope that uh, have an electronic. that would uh, that would be beneficial to our students and yeah. to our school. And so we we do have a little more detail uh, for you um, in the form of a report. As I said, I really, I, I really had intended to have this on the agenda and didn't get it there, but I did want to address it and uh, give you, uh, give the Sorry. board and public some information and give you the opportunity to ask questions. I tried to figure out the best way to report out instead of huge spreadsheets of every single expense. So what I did was I chunked it into three categories. Um, we have five thousand dollars that Adidas, Adidas in essence gives us to purchase their their items at their cost, at not their cost, but whatever their market value is. So we were able to buy middle school girls um, basketball, middle school boys basketball uniforms and coaching gear for all of our coaches out of that five thousand um, dollars. There was a, the second category. So at, at a savings of um, four forty nine hundred eighty dollars. $5,000, there's our $5,000. Um, students, some coaches coordinate with their students the purchase of like long sleeve shirts or t-shirts. And um, some of the teams did that with a 35% discount. Um, Embroidery is extra if they need their name on it or whatever. That's a different, I didn't report out on that. I'm just looking at Adidas. So to the savings to families, for the Adidas products that they purchased for their children through the team efforts was $809.85. From our budget, the items that we had already planned to purchase um, as part of our budget, with the discount, there were about uh, 245 different items purchased, caps, visors, uh, shirts, um, equipment, baseball bats, that kind of thing, 35 percent discount, um, we, the school saved about $4,700. So I don't know whether you wanted it broken down any different than that, but I think the focus of finding out if the co contract was effective was looking at the savings that it provides each of the groups. So that's kind of how, that's how I broke it out, um, as opposed to lots of spreadsheets as I was reading through them. Exactly like, uh, right. This is what I needed. Yeah. and to see where we go next yeah. year. And, and Adidas that. products are top quality products too. I'm sure that we could have gone and done something much less at Walmart or you know some of the other places, but the kids 
and, and the uniforms, and they look great if you haven't been able to see the events that they've done. If there's any other questions, I'm happy to field them or get the answers elsewhere. So is there you get items purchased by students through Athletic Cash account, is there at Athletic? There is, and that's why it wouldn't be funneled through like Tom to pay for student um, items. There's a, like our classes have, like class of 2022, all of our classes have those accounts, that's kind of where it goes through. Um, so it's not funneling to us and then to them and skewing our um, information. And the fifteen hundred dollar total cost is total cost of families. Right. 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 <clears throat> right. Total cost of families, not us. Okay. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. That was good. <laughs>